Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to our mask ultrasound Zoom meeting tonight. And we are so happy to have you and to welcome you in our Zoom. And I'm sure that uh, in spite of all these challenging times that we are in, you are making use of whatever resources you have available in your place. And uh, we're trying our best that uh, mask ultrasound will be a good source of information for all of you as we try to put together great speakers like Dr. Tolga and learn from them. So tonight I would like to uh, welcome everyone and especially our distinguished speaker, Dr. Ergunensh Tolga. We have, uh, I have actually introduced him several times and uh, I think you have known him already. Uh, this is his third lecture. And uh, I'm sure you have been acquainted with all the lectures that have uh, done in the past. And tonight, uh, without uh, going through the details of uh, all his uh, uh, credentials, he will speak about an ultrasound guided interventional procedures about on the elbow. So uh, we will be listening tonight a very uh, comprehensive lecture on that uh, particular procedure. But before we begin, uh, we will pause for a moment for a short prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity that we can share our knowledge, our skills, our time with our colleagues as we learn together, Lord, new information and uh, vital uh, procedures that can help us in our practice. Heavenly Father, I would like, Lord, to pray for Dr. Tolga, especially as he delivers his uh, talk, that may your wisdom be upon him and guide each one of us wherever we are in different parts of the world. Can it make, ensure that we are safe and nobody will be harmed by this uh, virus and nobody will be harmed in the process of helping our patients the process of helping ease the pain of our patients. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you Dr. Ergunensh Tolga from Turkey. Go ahead, Dr. Tolga. Thank you so much for your nice introduction and thank you so much, your nice invitation again. I'm very happy to be here third time. Um, we are talking about the elbow joint ultrasonography and some of the interventional procedures. Welcome again, the musculoskeletal active skills in ultrasound mask Zoom conference, the lecture of the elbow. Good morning or good afternoon or good night, wherever you are. Okay, uh, in this presentation, uh, for this presentation, I have used some anatomic platform and application such as 3D for medical Elzheimer, we have digital human platform and visual body web suite in 7D imaging MSK now, an anatomy, anatomy platform and can have premium as well. I have all, all of them licensed and I have used all of them legally. And uh, for this presentation, I used some books which you are seeing on this slide. And I would like to begin this lecture with the quick anatomy review of the elbow joint. I, you know, uh, when we talk about the elbow, there is uh, some main structures, bones, ligaments, muscle, and nerves. Let's begin with bones. You know, this is humerus. This is the posterior side of the humerus. Uh, anterior view of the humerus and the posterior view of the humerus. There is some important anatomic structure here. There's a medial epicondyle 
and the lateral epicondyle. You see the coronary fossa and radial fossa. Another important structure here at uh, the still articular surface of the humerus and capitulum humeri and thoracolia humeri. Other important structure is here, the posterior view of the humerus, you can see the olecranon fossa. And the other bone as ulna, interested with the elbow joint, this is the posterior view, and this is the anterior view of the ulna, and this is the lateral view. You need to know the most important structure is the coronary process of the ulna and the olecranon of the ulna. This is a radial notch, and other bone is radius, anterior view and the posterior view of the radius. This is a radial tuberosity. And uh, this anatomic cadaveric cross section of the elbow, you can see the humerus and the thoracolia. Um, this is an ulna, and this is a coronate process, and this is a olecranon, coronate fossa, and this is olecranon fossa. Elbow joint is here. We can see the synovial cavity, articular cartilage, synovial membrane, and articular capsule, all of them here. When we talk about the elbow joint, there is a different three joint here. The first joint is humeral ulnar joint, and the second joint is the humeral radial joint, and the third joint is a proximal radial ulnar joint. Let's look at muscle, the flexor muscle, biceps brachii, brachialis, and the brachioradialis. These are flexors of the, these are extensor, the mayor extensor, triceps brachii, and this is ancaneus. Another important structure in the, this joint, the ligaments, the medial side, uh, medial view and the lateral view of the joint, you need to know this is an annular ligament and the ulnar collateral ligament. There is a three separate layer at the ulnar collateral ligament. And this is a radial collateral ligament. This is an anterior view of the annular ligament. This, uh, it's very important ligament for the this joint and this is a lateral view of the ulnar ligament and a posterior view of the ulnar ligament annular ligament sorry uh, after the annular ligament you can see the fibrous articular capsule anterior view of the capsule lateral view of the capsule and the posterior view of the uh, fibrous articular capsule you can reach this capsule and inject into the something, whatever you want, uh, local anesthetic agent or steroid or PRP or ozone. You can reach all this, all over the, uh, cover all over the, this joint. Another important uh, uh, anatomic structure is the olecranon bursa we can see easily with ultrasonography because it's, it's very superficial anatomic structure. But when the bursitis occur, we can see clearly this anatomic structure with ultrasonography. Otherwise, we cannot see all the time. Uh, I would like to talk about the most common procedures of the elbow. Um, there is four different compartments or four different windows of, uh, of the elbow joint, anterior, medial, and the posterior compartment, and the lateral compartment as well. Uh, there is uh, different procedures with uh, for different compartments, and nerve block has uh, different procedures for the 
elbow joint. Let's start with the humoradial joint injection. Uh, this is a long axis view. When you put your transducer, this is, this is a posterior view of the uh, uh, elbow. When you put your transducer like this, this is a long axis view uh, of the elbow. And the, uh, when you perform the procedure out of plane, like this, the posterior to anterior, this is the lateral view of the long axis out of plane procedure. This is your transducer, long axis view, and the, your cannula out of plane approach. What are we gonna see on sonogram while a humoradial joint injection? Your transducer here. This is a long axis view of the joint and your kind of a here. You can perform this procedure like this out of plane approach. This is sonogram of the long axis plane of the joint. You can see the humerus and the radius, head of the radius. Yes, this is important muscle and you can see the joint here. When you're performing the procedure under the ultrasonographic guidance out of plate, you can see just the tip of the needle, not all the needle. If you would like to perform this procedure, long axis in plane approach, you should put your needle or cannula like this. So what we're gonna see on sonogram, this is the sonogram, long axis view and in plane approach to humoradial joint, like this. You can inject into the joint where whatever you want. Okay, uh, now humor will not joint injection. This is an in-plane, this, this is a short axis short axis, not long axis. This is a short axis and in-plane approach. What are we gonna say on the sonogram? Your ultrasound beams are cut to the anatomic structure like a knife. So your sonogram on the screen like this, this is the lateral side, this is the medial side. You can see, and you can reach here with the in-plane axis. You should not do this. You should not perform this procedure medial to lateral. Why? because there is, an, another, uh, there is an important nerve here. You don't want to puncture it. Okay. Uh, the most popular and the most important other anatomic structures about the elbow joint is a common flexor tendon. This is the lateral side, this is the medial side. When you put your transducer like this, at the medial side of the joint, this is a long axis view, like this. You can inject into the or peri flexor tendon 
in-plane approach like this. This is a flexor tendon attached to the hair. You can perform this procedure like this in an in-plane approach. Whatever you want, you can inject here, PRP or ozone or steroid or local anesthetic agent. Look at this shape at the medial side of the joint. This is your sonogram. Look at this shape. This is a same shape, humerus and other bone. And this is a joint. You can see the common flexor tendon here. And this is a long axis uh, in plane approach to inject in the common flexor tendon, peritendinous injection. Or you can perform fenestration as well. And this is a lateral side. This is a medial side of the elbow. When you put your transducer at the lateral side like this, this is a long axis view, what we're going to see, you can see the sonogram. This is the lateral side, humerus, this is radius, and common extensor tendon. You can see the, the sonogram like this. Spinator. And how you can perform the procedure above the common extensor tendon. You can perform in plane or out of plane. This is an easy way of uh, inject into the or peri tendinous something, the medial side and the lateral side. When you put your transducer like this, your Canula position, same on slide. It's very easy under sonogram. This is your sonogram, the lateral view of the procedure, the anterior view of the procedure. Lateral epicondyle, capitelli, lateral epicondyle, capitelli band. This is the bone radius of. There is an annular ligament here, as I told before. And you can see the common extensor tendon in plane approach, like this. You can inject into here whatever you want. This is the anterior view, lateral side. When you put your transducer here, like this. Wow, there's a sonogram. You can perform this procedure like this in in-plane approach. Numerous, radius, and tendons attached to the hair. Okay. Uh, we talk about the extensor and the flexor uh, tendons procedures. And other important procedures above the elbow joint interested with nerves. You need to know three important nerves. The radial nerve, the, this anterior view, medial view, and the posterior view of the 
elbow joint radial nerve and then other is a median nerve and ulna nerve. Where the nerves are important, not just sensory or motor innervation, sometimes they interrupt some their course. The first nerve is ulnar nerve. Let's talk about ulnar nerve entrapment. The tunnel sign as the entrapment neuropathy sign is very easy to find. Uh, this is an ulnar nerve entrapment mechanism. You see the ulnar nerve here. This is a posterior view of the ulnar nerve, the lateral side and the medial side. When you put your transducer like this, this is a short axis view at the posterior side of the elbow joint, like this. You can put the transducer, the short axis view, your sonogram should be here. This is the medial side, medial side is the lateral side. Brachialis, triceps, medial head, and this is a humerus. You can see the ulna here, like this. If you want to perform this procedure, hydrodissection or aerodissection, or inject perineural something, you can perform the procedure, shared axis in plane like this. Your cannula come from the lateral to medial. As well, you can perform the procedure medial to lateral side. This is uh, other uh, position of the viewing uh, ulnar nerve. You can see the ulnar nerve along axis view when you put your transducer like this, when you put your transducer long axis, you can see the all of the nerve like this. And you can perform your procedure proximal to distally in plain approach. Okay, let's look at the radial nerve entrapment. The most, this is the radial nerve and the most important nerve branch of radial nerve is the posterior interosseous nerve. This is a posterior interosseous nerve. This is a radial nerve. Posterior view of the joint radial nerve, posterior in interosseous nerve, and this is a lateral view of the elbow, radial nerve, and the posterior interosseous nerve. There's an interesting anatomic structure here, the V-shaped muscle. This is a spinator muscle. There is a two head. When you put your transducer like this, this is a long axis view, the posterior view of the joint. You can see this muscle, this is spinator muscle. This is brachial radialis. And your sonogram like this. Spinator muscle and spinator muscle. One head and other head one head and other head. You can see the nerve like this, long axis view. This muscle is a brachioradialis. This is a posterior view, long axis. And this picture uh, from surgery, you can see the posterior interosseous nerve and the 
splinter muscle. This is lateral view of the um, joint. There is other anatomic structure here, you know, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus, brachioradialis, and there is a spinator, posterior interosseous nerve. When you put your transducer short axis plane, your sonogram like this. This is radius. Look at this radius. This is a spinator muscle. This is a spinator muscle and the nerve and tapped here, posterior interosseous nerve and the brachioradialis, extensor caporadialis longus. Usually I'm trapped here or here. This is extensor caporadialis longus attached area. Okay, you can perform release uh, or hydrodissection of the posterior interosseous nerve, short axis, and in plane approach. Like this, lateral to medial. You can see the posterior interosseous nerve. This is a muscle, which is spinator. This procedure is the releasing of the posterior interosseous nerve with a surgical approach. If uh, the this approach are, doesn't work, maybe the patients go to under the surgery like this. Okay, it's a very short lesson today. And uh, one more thing I would like to inform you that the MOMARC, MOMARC is a morphological magic center was formed as a branch of the ultra dissection. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Dr. Tolga. What a wonderful uh, lecture on uh, interventional procedure of the elbow. I'm so amazed by your pictures and your animated uh, structures all over the place. It's always fun to see you give a very nice- Thank you so much. So do you have any question with Dr. Tolga? Uh, he actually dissected the muscles, the tendons, the joints, the nerves in a very okay. unique way. Yeah. Any Did you, may I may I ask something? Sure, sure, sure. Please. Hello, Dr. Tonga. Thank you very much for a wonderful lecture. Regarding the radial yeah, well. nerve on double crush syndrome, Dr. Tolga, how do we detect that if, if we're doing ultrasound? Of course, we have to scan the whole, uh, the whole nerve, right? And uh, where, is the, where is the common location for the possible double crush syndrome of a radial nerve? Thank you, Dr. Tolga. Well, um, double crush syndrome is the most worst scenario for the patient and uh, for the practitioner. But uh, in my daily practice, I'm not commonly see the double crash syndrome with the radial nerve and um, about the posterior uh, interosseous nerve. But the dorsal side of the um, uh, elbow, dorsal side of the uh, elbow and the proximal side of the elbow joint, especially we can see the I would like to show you this slide. At the spinator muscle intersection to do two head. Okay. The most entrapped area here, the most entrapped area here, uh, we can, Diagnose with ultrasonography, 
when the nerves, peripheral nerves and trap somewhere, the diameter of the nerve will be changed. The proximal side and the distal side diameter will be changed. And you can see other differences and other unaffected sides. So always the musculoskeletal ultrasonography, we need to compare affected side and the non-affected side. It's very important. And EMG studies are shown to us where the nerve and chat, but not always. We can, we can perform the procedures of the diagnostic uh, as, a, as a diagnostic tool, the ultrasonography, always um, help to us. If you, if you know what you are looking for, you can diagnose and treat at the same time and the same uh, area. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Tonga, there's another question here for ligaments in the elbow. What solution do you use? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, in my daily practice, I usually use ozone. Uh, ozone is a good, good choice for the periligamentous injection, uh, especially in COVID day. So I don't want to inject my patient to steroid agent, corticosteroid agent in this COVID days. So ozone is a good alternative to um, steroid agent, but PRP is good as ozone. But there's some tricky and there's some problematic uh, area with preparing the uh, PRP. If you have an ozone machine or if you have an ozone generator, you can push and set the machine and you can take your ozone, just this. Don't take a blood, don't centrifuge it, don't separate something. Uh, so ozone is a good choice for me, but PRP as well. Okay, good. And then there's also another question here. When do you decide or when to inject PRP, ozone, or do tenotomy? Maybe he's asking what are okay. your criteria for considering those different types of solutions? Okay. Um, yes, th th these are different solutions. Uh, but the as a diagnostic tool, the ultrasonography showed to us the degeneration of the muscle and the tendon and the ligament. When you compare the affected side and the non-affected side, you can see the pathologic change uh, on, uh, on the ligament and the tendons. You can see if you use high frequency linear transducer, you can see little separation or uh, you can see all separation at the ligament. Uh, I, I don't want to inject something healthy ligament or healthy tendon, but we, we know the PRP and the ozone have a regenerative effect on the tendon and the ligament. They are over helming to um, pain, they aim to pain palliation and they are work uh, as a regenerative agent. Okay, uh, another question here, Dr. Tolga is, uh, what application are you, are you using? <laughs> They're, they're so uh, fascinated with your lecture. So they're asking what application are you using for your lecture? Thank you so much. There's not one application. There is 
six or seven application I used uh, for my presentation, uh, the 3D4 uh, medical anatomic platform, be a digital human platform, visible body web suite, a 7D imaging MSK now anatomy platform and a can have premium platform um, and some of the books here you can see on this slide. Yeah, that's good. So Dr. Choga, thank you so much for your time. I know it's uh, very early in the morning in your country and you still uh, uh, make way for us to really listen to your lecture and thank you very much and hope to see you soon you take care and uh, thank you so much for nice invitation again dr jamie yeah thank you very much too it's always for me yeah and please, please take care we will see you soon and also for our attendees thank you so much for uh coming and for listening to our lecture today and see you next week with our other lecture. Just uh, keep track on the announcement in the Facebook. You will see all the uh, upcoming uh, workshops and lectures. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Have a good, day. Have a good night. Have a good night. You're welcome. Yeah.